Hi everybody. It's great news today. You know, uh, we have the elections in the midterms tomorrow, and Obama is completely toast. He has the, no chance. He's uh, losing the Senate. He's uh, going to be crushed in the, the Congress, and his only recourse will be to uh, to veto everything which comes his way. But I mean. Uh, he won't veto anything because he, he's going to be faced with uh, the birthers. He's going to be faced with uh, the uh, NSA scandal, the uh, Benghazi scandal, the IRS scandal, the Fast and Furious. I was reading yesterday that uh, Larry Klayman, who has already got some victories against uh, Eric Holder, he got... Uh, an index of uh, 1,700 pages or something, or, or 10,000 pages of uh, telephone calls and emails, uh, transcripts of uh, Lois Lerner and all those people uh, concerning. Um, no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't Lois Lerner. It was concerning Fast and Furious, and uh, that was Larry Klayman who got that Ju Judicial Watch, and he he says that he's. Um, He's going to be uh, uh, he's going to be arguing his his points in 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 front of a court in front of the court tomorrow. It's Tuesday, and he's uh, he wants to prevent the NSA from uh, snooping on people on their telephones. So, anyways, because it's good news because uh, Obama is losing the Senate and Congress. Now is the time to explain a little bit about why. What, who, I, who I am, what, what I'm doing, and why. The thing is that uh, I'm reluctantly bringing this Christian message to, uh, to, to Christians because I am a Buddhist and I have no... Um, it, it's, it goes against... Uh, it, I, I don't like doing it because uh, I, for me, Christianity is not good news. Jesus is not good news. God is not good news um, because I, I, I'm a Buddhist. But... You see, in Buddhism, we have an apocalypse, same as the Christian apocalypse, but uh, but it's it's very different. The only thing that's the same is that it, it's the it's an apocalypse. It's at the end of times. There's this great big conflict between good and evil. So um, people say Christianity and Buddhism are separate, but they're not separate because uh, when Christianity appeared. That was 500 years after Buddha, and um, uh, Buddhism had spread all over the Middle East. So there was Buddhism in uh, Pakistan. Pakistan was Buddhist, and uh, Afghanistan was Buddhist, and even all the way up into Central Asia and Kazakhstan and uh, Russia. That was also Buddhist all the way up there. Buddhism was, At that time, Buddhism was spreading. That was the way it was spreading to go to China. It was spreading into Central Asia, way up into the the uh, Gobi Desert in Mongolia, and was spreading up that way. And uh, it had spread to the, all through Afghanistan to the Iranian border, even over into the Ira Iranian border, into Iran. And uh, that was before Jesus. So like 200, 300 years before Jesus, there was Buddhism, which was just like uh, maybe 500 or 1,000 miles away from Jerusalem. So when Christianity came, like 300 years after that, uh, th those countries and those lands were had were completely drenched with Buddhism. They were permitted. They had been completely uh, converted to Buddhism uh, way before that. The the like the people who came with the caravan routes to uh, to Jerusalem. This is just an example because I mean <laughs> Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem probably didn't exist. It was probably just a little village at that time. So, I mean, there, if there were caravans coming in from Iran, Afghanistan, and those, which there were a lot, that's how they did their business, by, by caravans. So they were coming from places, like the, the caravan would set out from Afghanistan and would reach, like, uh, Jerusalem and those places in, in just, like, three weeks, maybe a month maximum. And then they come back and go back and forth and back and forth all for year, every year, like thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds and thousands, millions of caravans and people would be milling back and forth. When they left Afghanistan, there were like Buddhist temples and monasteries all there. That that's what they were there, and all the way to the border of Iran. So 
the thing is that uh, this um, prophecy of the apocalypse in Buddhism is a text which is called Kala Chakra. And Kala Chakra is a very old teaching which, uh, which developed and it, it, was, uh, it was a small, small text. And then it was written out into a very broad system, a big system of uh, meditation and uh, uh, based upon this deity which is called Kala Chakra. And in the new texts which came out in the 14th century, there was a prophecy, an apocalypse prophecy. I give a description of a demon king who would come at the end of times and who would fight against the king of Shambhala. And so I am the king of Shambhala. Uh, the king of Shambhala, here, here, here is a picture of the king of Shambhala, Rudra Chakra, the king of Shambhala of this period. And there, he, he will fight against an evil king and that evil king, there's a description in the Kala Chakra of what his faith is, what his religion is. He has a religion which is, cons consists of eight great teachers. It's a mixed religion. So there are four Jewish prophets, Adam, Noah, Abraham, and Moses. So there's already four Jewish in, in that, his religion. It's a mix. Then there's Jesus. And one Christian, it's one Christian is Jesus. Then there's one called Mani. Mani is a religion which is influenced by Christianity, the Greek gods, and also a strong influence of Buddhism. So he has a mix which even includes some, some Buddhism, but it's, it's a hodgepodge, weird mix. There's Muhammad and Mani who are the Muslim, Muslim prophets. So Generally, it can say he mixes Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. That, so that fits Obama to the T because Obama has a Jewish family. He has his brother, his cousin are Jewish, and his cousin is a black uh, rabbi who has a synagogue, and his mother-in-law is Jewish. So he, uh, he has the influence of Judaism. So he fits perfectly. Now, I had no motivation to reveal the Christian uh, Apocalypse and the Antichrist and 666 because we don't use those words. That's a little alien to, to, to uh, the, the vocabulary. We don't have those words. And, but I got uh, my intent, even before I knew about Obama, was to reveal the Buddhist apocalypse. And I, I've been, I've been uh, intent on revealing that for like 15 years already. So when, uh, when uh, Obama came along, I was already into this long before that. Obama just came on top of it. That was he was the the final final icing of the cake. But he he. I was expecting him when he came along, but I'm the reluctant messenger because I had to involve in this Christianity, but. In our Buddhist prophecy, it already says that he will be of a partly Christian. He will have Christian Christianity as part of his faith. But why do I accept, reluctantly being a reluctant messenger of this Christian apocalypse, why do I accept to give this uh, Christian message? It's because when you take, for example, somebody has a website and then they need you to repair the website, for example. And so you say, well, wh what software did you use for the website? Did you use Microsoft? Uh, were you working on, uh, you know, what uh, program did you use? What exact program, Adobe or whatever, you know? And then I have to know exactly which Microsoft program you used, Windows or whatever. Because if I have to work on your website, I have to know the exact program. So it's the same thing. If I am to reveal this Antichrist, which we have in our Buddhist, um, in our Buddhist apocalypse, um, it says that he's part Christian. So I have to look at Christianity, I have to take apart the, and examine in detail Christianity so that I can apply that to reveal this guy. I have to know about him. It's like the same as uh, detectives have to study uh, how somebody, uh, how a criminal is operating. Or like a hunter, for example, if, if somebody is uh, hunting for moles under, underground. You can't see a mole. A mole is uh, invisible. He's hidden. But you have got to know how he operates underground. You have to know how he makes his tunnels and everything. Then you can go and you can catch him. 
You have to know his habits. So it's the same way for me to reveal this Antichrist. I have to, I know that he, in our Buddhism, they say he will be partly Christian. So I have to study his habits. So I study his habits and I studied what the Antichrist means, what the Apocalypse, Christian Apocalypse means. And I also studied 666. To, because I know that 666 is his identity. That's his identity card. So I saw this and I discovered this Newsweek article in 2008. And it was called Belief Watch is Obama the Antichrist. When I looked at this, I saw that it says here. Now on November 5, that was the day of Obama's election. The day after his election, Todd Strandberg was at his desk fielding emails from the world. Now Strandberg was receiving up-to-date news from his constituents in Illinois. One of the winning lottery numbers in the president-elect's home state was 666, which everybody knows is the sign of the beast, also known as the Antichrist. So my hair stood on my head and I said, hey, Obama's the Antichrist because of 666. So that's how I discovered Obama was the Antichrist. That's why I am bringing this reluctant message now. I'm the reluctant messenger of the Bible. So you people, you should also be the messengers of the apocalypse and relay this message which I'm bringing to you. Okay, bye-bye.